do you want to know where those four mistakes anxious attached men make that they should stop making? Keep watching. Hello everyone, Mariana Turoff here and I am your favorite therapist and coach if you have anxious attachment style. So yesterday I made a video on these four mistakes that anxious attached women make and then they should stop making and somebody really clever on the comments said, can you make a video of men? And I'm like, do the male version and I said, you know what, that is going to be tonight's content and um, I elaborated today and I'm always making an effort to bring you guys the best content that I can so then you can leave a little bit wiser after you watch any of my videos. So let's go over these four um, mistakes. They're the same mistakes that I did on my women version, okay, on the men version. So just keep in mind that men and women are capable of making these four mistakes as actions. They're both capable of bringing up the commitment topic, trying to convince the other person, saying what you want with this person, not without this person, and keeping their options open. Okay, both genders are capable of doing these four actions, but is there is a different reaction. When a woman does it to a man, the male brain reacts in its own male way. When a man does it towards a woman, her brain reacts in a different way. So we can both be capable of doing the same things, but we are not, we never will be capable of getting the same reaction. Both genders react differently to these things. So. Let's go over the first one, which is bringing up the commitment topic, okay? This is not the same as the case as a woman, okay? If you are a man and you're bringing up the commitment topic, first of all, <clears throat> men are in charge of leading the relationship and how serious it gets. You're in charge of it, okay? It's very unlikely that a woman will be... Um, would you be my boyfriend? Would you be my husband? You know, it's, yeah, I guess refreshing, but is the man that actually gives a woman a relationship, gives a woman a ring. And that is what I want you to connect with, this piece of information that if you're a man, you're in charge of having this woman be led by you into how serious and committed this relationship becomes. Women are not in charge of that. Okay, so be very careful letting your anxiety blind you, okay, because the anxiety is going to act as a blindfold that is going to prevent you from doing two things, <clears throat> two most important things, okay? One is that it's going to prevent you from seeing the red flags in this person, your anxiety of wanting to have a relationship and wanting to tap on the commitment topic is coming from a place of lack because you don't want to be alone. And it's going to prevent you from seeing the red flags in this woman's behavior. And also, falling in love, well, quote unquote, falling in love, right? <laughs> Creating attachment, that's what I mean to say, with the potential of this person because it's a potential that anxious attached people we tend to create in our heads okay that's part of um anxious attachment and we just don't create it after we create it we chase it and we chase after it okay so what is the antidote to this because i always like to bring antidotes um take your time and really focus on pacing yourself remember that this person needs to make merits merits to win your heart, merits to show you that this person has a genuine interest, okay? There's a lot of men that go out with women and they go into like, let's get to know you mode and they don't lead them into doing anything else, you know? When in reality, you want her to kiss you, you want her to show you that she is interested, you're kind of just letting her do whatever she wants in this whole 
let's get to know you phase where you're buying dinners, you're investing your time, your money, your emotions, and in the end, this person really wants nothing with you, doesn't even want to be led. So very careful, okay? Then the second mistake is trying to convince her that you're the best couple on earth, you know, and that you're great together. So if you keep advertising yourself to a woman, you start to create expectations on her. When, when a woman does it, a man feels almost criticized, you know, that he wants to, mm, on his own, he wants to build up this idea, you know, of you both being a great couple. Women, when you tell her and you advertise yourself and you say, well, I'm going to convince you, convince her that, that she's going to be very happy with me. So what happens? Anxious attached men start to overly promise, overly promise we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And usually some anxious attached men tend to target women that are going through some sort of hardship and they promise, 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 promise. When you start to convince a woman and you're trying really hard to advertise yourself, the woman brain will create expectations, pretty much kind of like a movie of the future. And if you don't deliver, she would lose massive respect for you. And with men that are connected with their masculinity, men are not looking for love. Men are looking for respect. If you are not looking for respect, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on your masculinity, okay? Um, because anxious attached men have this fear of having this woman leave them, okay? Remember, is the anxiety that is doing this. You will begin to advertise yourself, telling her how you're both great. And remember that women don't forget. <laughs> okay, we're not like men. We're like, oh, do you remember what happened on June 13, 1997? You know, men are like, mm -hmm. but women will know and they'll pinpoint exactly what you promised her April 7, 1987. She will know. And no matter what, <laughs> there is a trigger, a number 87 on the wall. She will remember what you said in 1987. So, Remember that women have very, very sharp memory. Okay, so um, so all of your promises will be written down in her mind. <laughs> and if you don't follow through with a woman, it's, it's not going to look great. If anything, if you overly promise so that she won't leave, if you don't follow through, she will leave. Okay? <clears throat> And she will lose respect for you. And in the end, the only thing that that is going to do is going to have you try to beg for that respect back. And you're going to be chasing that respect back that you lost by over-promising. And when you start to chase that respect back, you throw emotion. Crying, begging, or becoming angry. Anger is also an emotion. Okay, you become reactive. So what you're doing um, is killing any emotional attraction and you will look as someone that is very easy to manipulate. So men, attention to all men, if you become angry, irate, what you're doing is you're throwing a shit ton of emotion into things. Women lose respect for that. And we can't allow it if you're going to be the leader of the relationship. And when we see that weakness, women, it's very easy for women to start manipulating. You know, because you're chasing for her respect. And then she'll be like, oh, I can get a, we can get away with so much, you know, if you're in chasing mode. So the antidote to this is to slow, I'm sorry, is to show. Okay, don't advertise yourself with just words, actions, actions. Make your actions congruent, okay? If you have money and you're offering her that you're going to send her to school, that you're going to buy her a car, that you're going to do all these things, actions. It has to be congruent. 
what you're promising with what you have, with what you say, with what you text, with what you say, with how you act. If women find a disconnection that you're over-promising, but you don't really look like a guy that she immediately goes and she immediately loses respect for you. Okay, so third mistake. <laughs> you only say what you want with her, not without her. So this gets a little bit more complicated for men because here in this area, men hold a lot of a big load of uh, responsibility. So when there is a man with no purpose, there is no man. Even if your purpose is not clear and your purpose is to find your purpose, you at least have that purpose. But when you have no purpose at all, then it's just like mm, your toast. Your masculinity will not show through. It's not going to shine. Mm, so why am I saying this? Because when men speak about their purpose and their commitment with themselves, that makes women look up to you and respect you. And women, when, they, when we respect you, we want to be led by you because we trust you. We trust you to lead us. Okay, fine. I'm here. You know, just like, but you have to show that you have a purpose and you have a commitment with yourself. When a woman looks up to you, she's going to want to compete with those interests that you have. Okay. It could be your goals, long term, short term, professionally, financially, your friends, your family, um, your nutrition, your fitness, your personal development and when men start to speak about these things okay you start to tell her what you're working on without her that is gonna want to make her feel included okay so that's why you have to have a purpose at least a list of things that you do on a daily basis for your own well-being Okay, not self-care, spa, things, no, no. Commitment with your financial goals, with your fitness goals, with the things that you do to make yourself better and adding value as you age. Okay, not self-care. Oh, I have this with my friends. Oh, I have that with my friends. And telling her how busy you're going to be, that's, that's not it. That's just playing it cool. Women don't like that either, just so you know. Um because it makes you look kind of like insecure so you can speak about you know well in two years i am planning on having a property or in three years i'm really planning on just starting up my own business and i'm working on that you know i'm really focused on that that is my goal so that 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 speech Okay, that really helps. But again, it needs to be congruent with your time. If you're saying that in three years you want to start up your own company, but then you spend all your time with her, she's going to be like, well, when is this guy going <laughs> to work on his company? You know, but you just leave everything and you're with her. You're speaking about the things you want to do with her and then your goals go out the window. Okay, your commitment with yourself, and that makes you look weak and flimsy. So if you meet a girl, there's nothing wrong with spending time with her, but just don't leave everything just to be with her. Mm. So when you speak of what you want without her, you elevate your value. That's not to say that you can't speak about the things that you want to do with her, you know. But in this case, I would recommend that you use some sort of 20-80 rule that you're not talking about all the things that you want to do with her. You know, you can be like, hey, what do you think? We can go skiing someday. You know, that's that's great, you know. But use, that's the antidote, okay. Use an 80-20 rule on this, for sure. Mm, let's move on to mistake number four some men that don't like to keep his options open and i don't understand why is that some guys don't keep their options open so again because this channel is for men that are anxious attached this is very common immediately you'll feel like this is your person you're in love you don't need no longer to look and 
then you delete the app and you're like oh you jump into something exclusive way too fast so um, let's elaborate on what is it what does it mean to keep your options open because there's a lot of confusion with this okay keep your options open looks like this i'm sorry it doesn't look like this okay following instagram girls a hundred of them a day just looking at their bodies giving them likes and leaving creepy comments that doesn't mean that you're keeping your options open no because that woman on the other side <laughs> is not seeing you as a potential husband right then Keeping your options open also doesn't mean watching porn compulsively when you're ejaculating to your computer without the warmth of a real flesh body of a woman. And also, keeping your options open if you're in a committed relationship doesn't mean cheating and it doesn't mean acting shady and it doesn't mean sending dick pics to other women, okay? That doesn't mean that. <laughs> keeping your options open when you're in a non-committed relationship is also doing some circular dating, seeing other people, doesn't mean that you need to sleep with them, you get to know other women, they express interest, that's all great. Or you express interest, right? And if you're interested in them, don't give a woman a relationship so quickly until she has done a level of merit. If you're married and you're in a committed relationship, keeping your options open, it's a state of mind. It's more, and this is for both, it's a state of mind. It's to think that there are a million women out there that could be selected by you that you can look at and then you can choose. It doesn't mean that you'll be out and have all kinds of women, you know, come to you and worship you. No, it's a state of mind that if you weren't in this relationship because it was meant to end, is that you're gonna go out on the street, out on the dating field, and there is going to be a lot of options for you to choose from. You're not going to be the chosen one you are going to choose it's a state of mind and i want to make that very clear because it seems to have be create a lot of confusion sometimes where people don't understand what keeping your options open is people think it's cheating people think it's sleeping with several people if you are in a non-committed relationship by all means do your thing you know but when it comes to committed relationships more of like a state of mind okay not thinking that this person is your only chance for love if you walk around life with the belief that this woman is on a pedestal okay she's your only chance of love without this woman having done any merits you worship her without having her show you the amount of value that she can provide to your life and this is also to be connected with your masculinity and to see what type of value is this woman adding to my life i want to know and you want to see you have to wait and see so why worship someone that hasn't earned those merits you know and i'm going to tell you why why you worship these women why you put them on a pedestal because you're lazy to begin out and date you're probably just exhausted and jaded and annoyed about dating and once you find something that eh, looks like a good match you immediately grab it put her on a pedestal here we go let's do this okay it doesn't have to be like that again this is what is related to keep your options open there has to be different women on your roster and you decide, you do the selection, okay? Mm. So the apps are not going to do the work for you. What the apps are going to do is just going to connect you with these people, you know, but they're not going to do the whole, you know, display of charisma that you're going to do. You know, you have to be congruent. You know, your texts need to match what you say in person. Um... You probably just hate the overall dating process and relationship development. Okay, that is the hardest part. Not to connect. You know, the relationship development is with your own emotional skills. 
And again, that means you're not used to leading a woman or used to leading a relationship, okay? And that is masculine behavior. So a lot of men are not used to leading a woman. They don't even know how that looks like, right? So then that is the work that needs to be put on, you know, that if you don't have a purpose, then maybe this will be a good purpose for you, okay, to learn to reconnect with your masculinity. So really, really high value for you because most of the time men, it's not so much that they want a relationship, you know, they want to feel that they can conquer a relationship. This masculine behavior needs to be learned, right, to train the mind, Mm, for you to reconnect with your masculine energy and understand the huge power that you have, okay? Each gender, we both have a great power, right? The power of men is to lead and to be problem solvers. So women don't like to pass from men to men. We want only one man, <laughs> okay? So women need to feel emotionally safe, that she can say something and you're not going to blow up an emotion, okay? There are some guys that if a woman presents a complaint or says something that you don't like, you know, if you recoil and you feel like you're one of that guilty conscious kind of guy of anxious attachment or you walk yourself onto the doghouse or you cry and you beg and you apologize nonstop. No, that's not a masculine trait. One of the first principles of masculine energy is to be stoic. And that doesn't mean to be quiet and that you're just taken in, taken in and you're just quiet. No, stoic means you're in control of your emotions. So some men think that they're being stoic by keeping their mouth shut and saying nothing, but then their body language is totally due to an address, right? They're like, their nonverbal communication is letting their arrow, they're like, oh, they're rolling their eyes like, you know, you're acting like this, or, you know, you're storming out of the room, or you're just like frozen face and you're just like, blinking like this, looking down. No, stoic. You look, you listen, you process, and you control your emotions, and you don't let your emotions control you. That's not masculine behavior. Stoic, in control of your emotions. So I really hope this served you well, and I want to tell you something, okay? My master class is going to be in October, and we're starting to fill up the spots. It's going to be here through YouTube. So in order for you to have access to the class, you need to subscribe to the channel because it's only going to be on display for subscribers. And to give you an invitation to my master class, you need to follow us on Instagram. That's where we're going to have the invitations because the invitations are through DM only. So I want to wish you the best, send you a kiss and a hug, and I love you. You guys are very important to me, and thank you for leaving me your comments and more creative ideas for me to create more and more content, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.